It's another morning. Time check, 9 a.m. Pupils of Mississippi ME Primary School are next are streaking in one after another for class. Most of them with a bowl in hand for the school feeding program during lunch break. Their classroom, this pavilion, isolated and in the middle of a bushy area. Mohammed Awal Osman, the head teacher here, says what we have come to meet is an even better situation. There is no structure for the children, it's only a pavilion put up by an NGO for them. For so many years, these children, they are learning under this pavilion. As of now, it's a rainy season. Whenever it begins to rain, we have to close down the school. We only have one dual desk for the whole school. They are sitting on the floor. They learn everything, doing it on the uh, ground. So teaching and learning is no going on well here. The pupils, some as young as two to three years, sit and lie on the bare floor to study due to lack of furniture. The school has so far thrived on the benevolence of well-wishers and NGOs, and some of what should be basic necessities remain absent here. No washrooms and sanitation equipment except this tippy tap, which is aiding the pupils to wash their hands. Sisipe Primary School Annex is one of many thousands of public schools in Ghana with no access to toilets. Conservative estimates project 26% of public basic schools do not have access to toilets. The number translates into more than 12,000 public basic schools, representing half the total number of public basic schools in Ghana, according to a survey by the National Minimum Standards and Implementation Model. The absence of furniture, proper school structure and sanitation facilities here is threatening to erode the gains being made by a GES program expected to make teaching and learning activity-based and engaging for pupils. So happening now is what the Ghana Education Service calls the Lively Minds program where some community women have been trained to take these pupils through activity-based learning at the kindergarten level. So all of these children you see here at the moment are being engaged in identification of shapes, colors, you know, sizes of items, etc., which is happening here. Wasila Harura is one of three women on duty for the next hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> Zuera Benjilma says the young girls here are taking an interest in coming to school as a result. Now, this our girl child, they are no longer going for Kayai. They don't go to farm, they don't go to any place. Every morning they have to prepare themselves just because they realize that their mothers are now involved in the teaching of their younger ones. These women who are volunteering to help the children here say they can do more if school furniture and the infrastructure are improved. Head of Supervision at the East Goncha Municipal Education Directorate, Alhaji Adams Karuribi, says they are reaping the benefits of a Lively Minds program. As beginners in learning, they should be well vested in the mother language. So that is why the uh, Lively Minds program has come and the, the facilitators mostly are mothers. So they use their mother language to facilitate, to support the children. Even identification of colors in the L1 is very challenging. Simple uh, uh, mathematical calculations is also the same. So this Lovely Man program has come to help us, and we are seeing the fruits that already it is bearing. Mothers are very happy that they have roped in. Head teacher Mohammed Awo Osman hopes the narrative of people sitting and lying on the bare floor in this pavilion will change, and soon too. We need some support from everybody, individually, any philanthropists that will come in, NGOs, government, anybody who could help to put up this stretcher for these younger ones to be able to sit and finish it very well for them to be able to sit and learn well. 
For the gains to be sustained, things must change, lest the story here would be sadly summed up as taking a step forward and making two other steps backwards. And in all of this, it is the future of these innocent kids that remain in jeopardy. Komla Adom TV3 News, Matlapo, East Gunja Municipality, Savannah Region. Well, so we're back. Now, um, what do you make of the condition of the school at CCP, um, Edda Magbana? Well, and I, I have been an education advocate for more than 10 years. I, only. I, more than 10 years, I must be honest. Only. And I'm very concerned about education, especially in our rural communities. I think that we have <coughs> two big issues with education in this country. The first one is the fact that there is a huge gap between funding education at a lower level, especially in rural communities, and, and also the issue of quality. Now, when you take the issue now, look at these innocent children, through no fault of theirs. They are sitting on the floor to study, and, and yet they are expected to compete with children coming from some of the best international schools here and all of that. And the situation is not only... Uh, peculiar to CCP. It, it is across the country. There are so many, many districts where you see some of these schools. You see schools with such poor infrastructure. And so you would want to ask that where are the people in charge of education? And you see, when you look at our educational sector, I am a critic of the minister, and it's not pertaining to this issue alone. But we have a very fine structure with many people who are supposed to report some of these challenges. Now, when you go to the circuits, we have circuit supervisors. You have district directors of education. So you would want to ask, what kind of reports do they write that fits into the making of policy or preparing of the next budget for the ministries, such that this situation can persist for so long. Look at it, very but, pathetic. But Adam, you have to say yeah. it's an ongoing process. For example, no. I'm just on the on the page of Dr. Yaose Duchum, the Minister of Education. On the 4th of February, um, he dispatched or he reported of dispatch, and, and, and it's here, dispatch please, of, please. Of, of 2,300 dual decks to 80, bus, 80 busy schools in Kwandai, in the northern region. Well, so when, it's you a run, when you run, when you run, when you run education, in such a manner that it is very effective. You don't even need central government intervention before you provide common things like desk. You don't need central government intervention where you have to wait for the central government to intervene before you have the provision of desks. Because how much does it cost to provide desks? Not too long ago, I made some donation of desks to a school in um, uh, along uh, some, some schools along close to a Sujaman, all right, uh, by the honorable. Joyce Baba Mokhtari, she asked me to make the donations on her behalf, an individual provided. My point is that when you go to the district, how much does it cost for MPs Common Fund, for District Assembly Common Fund to be used to provide such a necessity? Because when you look at even their budget, the number of times they go for retreats, the amount of money that they spend on allowance, on these their retreats and what have you. And then we when are you, here. When you, one day when you become no, an MP, no, no, we'll because, take this no, see, these things are not even pecked. Even before I started... I'm saying that you're even here. Before I started you saying, one, you, one day you become fact, an MP, the district we'll you are talking about. In 2014, I was in the central Gonja district in the northern region with a team of volunteers to go and we see schools like this, go to places like Sherry, number four, and all of that. We've seen this kind of situations. And I've always been an advocate that, look, let us pay some particular attention to these things. Roland, how much does it cost to build a six-unit classroom block? Not too long ago, Ghana Gas built one in the Lembele district for 800,000 Ghana cities. 800,000 for a six-unit, well, proper six-unit classroom block. There are many institutions, many NGOs that are ready. Sometimes all they want from government or from the local district assembly is facilitation. There are organizations like Pencils of Promise, and they have built many of these schools, even in my constituency and other constituencies. And so I'm saying that all we need is the policymakers taking education as a priority. Look at these kids sitting here. Very pathetic. I want to believe that after this exposure to the issue by TV3, the MCU or DCE in charge of this particular place and the regional ministers and ministers from that area, the MPs, must go there and resolve the issue. Very pathetic. I think that, Roland, beyond just exposing us to the issues, 
make follow up because not too long ago you did one in the front place area and then few weeks or months later i realized that the mp for the area uh, the honorable betty crosby responded with some interventions let's be following up to see that something is done about these things because i can always say that education is a leveler i am here today because of education my parents didn't have the privilege of going to school but they made a conscious effort to put me there now when i started primary school imagine that i started school in places where we lack all of this basic infrastructure how can you even be competitive i, I think that is pathetic this is a national now you do agree that's a process it's, it's a process but i'm saying that you must have the alacrity with which the minister must respond we don't see that he has said so many things he's good at making fine speeches and all of that but he's not showing real commitment to resolving I'm, the issues. I'm saying that he just he basic just level and look he just at the problem that we are facing. 300 decks, for Very, example, and I'm saying that a serious minister, a serious minister, will not even make these issues a central government policy. Let the district assemblies even take charge. How much does it cost to provide decks? Look at how they are even washing their hands, where they are seated to eat. And these are supposed to be the future leaders. What kind of future are we giving them? What kind of platform are we giving them for them to build their capacity? Go to China. Go to India, go to the United States. Kids around the same age. Some have been taught how to build robots and what have you. AI is the order of the day. And then you want these kids to come and compete with those people? Government must get serious with education. Pius. Well, on a lot of the things that uh, my brother Adam has said uh, on this matter, I cannot but agree with him. Uh, we are all concerned. Education is a leveler. It's an important aspect of our national life. And successive governments must pay attention to uh, education. Suffice to also add that development in education and across all sectors is not an event, it is a process. But the truth of the matter is that it is a process that has started. And I think that we should actually feel happy and, and, and lucky as a people that we are seeing the increased investments that we are now seeing in education. If we were doing this a number of years back, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, I'm sure that we would have been better off today. We now have the free SHS, for instance. We now have TVET, free TVET. And uh, Adam eloquently made reference to uh, countries like China, India, and so on, because they focused on some interventions. For instance, STEM, and you were on the minister's Facebook page. You go down further, you will notice that we are now having uh, secondary schools dedicated to the education of the sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And we are building world-class infrastructure to be able to deal with that. We are talking about an, a general overhaul of our curricula. We are being taught when Diego de, de Zambuja landed on the shores of Elmina. It's fine to know that. But other people at the same time are learning coding and robotics. And that is why the focus is shifting, and I'm happy that it is under this dispensation that we are seeing these uh, increased investments and, uh, and a paradigm shift uh, as far as our educational psychology is concerned. I'm, and I'm quite excited about it. Do we need to do more? Yes. But we need to rake in more revenue, OK? So it means that the government has to look at the ways to get more money. And that is why when we are discussing many of our challenges, my plea is that let us not be partisan. Because the structural changes and the structural challenges that will confront uh, government A, if we don't deal with it in an honest and holistic manner, God forbid, the non-performing government B will come back and then the, 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 the structures that militate against the, the, the deliverables that we want will militate against them too. So we have to look at the structural challenges that are confronting us. When we are able to resolve that, I believe that uh, all in all, our challenges will go. But I, for the CCP uh, example, I think that one of the things that you guys in the media do, and you must be commended, is that you draw attention to clear and present danger. And then policy makers and duty bearers re respond immediately. And I'm happy that my brother Adam is talking about burden sharing, what is the role of the MP? They receive the common fund, they receive their allocation of the GET fund, they receive their allocation of the national health insurance. There's not, main, there's not much that many of us see them doing out of that. We must burden share, and they must also come on board, in the district assembly as well. But uh, the, under the National Youth Authority too, we are building schools, the National Youth Volunteer Program, 
uh, even even cheaper than the eight hundred thousand that you talked about, which means that it can be done if we do put our, our wheels to Why the shoulder. Why to not out? I have okay, so so uh, your your, your we'll views there. on this as well. We'll please please play the two. We'll get we'll get there. Well, the response from the stream is that you've been fighting. Mm -hmm. Well well, let me also comment TV3 in particular for the solid job you have been doing, and in this particular case for the community of CCP. It is obvious that these exposures will bring duty bearers to perform their duties to the citizens. Probably this is not new to somebody who have gone through situations like this. I did not have the privilege of a classroom when I was in Sankana. The classroom I had was an Akiapu tree. And the weather determined where your classroom was located. 50 years ago. <laughs> it determined where. Oh, yes. Yes, it's true. He's right. I'm 50. He's not a young man. So, so it's obvious. That's why I want to take my son out of the bracket of the youth, because if you are the one leading the youth in this country, <laughs> there is a challenge. You know? So, it's obvious that we have gone through challenges. How did I escape and to be sitting on the table with people who attended Ivy schools? Because at the time, teachers accepted postings to rural communities without electricity. They accepted postings to communities where there was no water. They were willing to sacrifice so that other persons, including me, would come to this level. Today, our level of avarice for material wealth and what have you is the reason for which people would decline postings into rural communities so they can bring up people. And so I want to commend those teachers in CCP who accepted the postings to be there and to bring up potential leaders of our nation. It is wrong that these same people, and if you go and read about the things I've wrote, written about myself, I said that whilst I went through those circumstances where I had to use the moonlight to study, to sit for my basic level examinations, I was expected to do well with persons who were coming from Keta. And yet you did well. You understand? Very, very well. And I was expected to do well with people coming from Accra and other places. The examiner would not discriminate and take my circumstances into consideration when they are marking. You're right. The questions they will set, and one of the questions we answered on Lexis and Structures was about the aviation sector. And I was sitting there learning how to do granite farming. And you go and bring me questions on aviation sector, and you expect me to know whether when a plane is about taking off, what does, does it mean? It is obvious that there is something that is wrong with our system. And so we cannot have a uniform examination set for everybody and expect that they will do well. So when I go and get aggregate 38 from that community, I am not placed in a better school because somebody has gotten aggregate 6. This is the challenge that we face. But I also have to put in a caveat. That's why the Minister of Education has given a certain 30% uh, um, but let me intake. come back for, to the for, thing you for, mentioned for about the minister. Are, are you said the minister donated, I, the minister I made a donation. Was it his personal I, I donation tell, or this is... It's not donation, I'm saying that he No, you said minister made donations. No, 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 he transported. Um, uh, you you used the word... Transported. transported. Yes, the, that is the duty of our minister. So that's what he did, transported. So it was not a donation. Adam Agbana. Adam Agbana is a, is a, is a former just, just deputy you, you youth you organizer of the NDC. Uh, he's intending to contest the, 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 the primaries of Ketu South. And then also Bernard Mona is a former chair, is a former chair for the PNC. Pius Hajide is also intending to contest the, the primaries of the MPP for the Esujamain constituency. He is currently the Roland. chief executive for Roland. the National Youth Authority. Roland, the Thank you. Please, 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 30 seconds. In 30 seconds.